If you are installing a more advanced car audio system, you may have several new accessories that you want to power in a build. Things like LED lights, cooling fans, digital signal processors, other gear, these may be all things that you want to turn on whenever the audio system turns on. Unfortunately, the remote turn on lead that comes out of a radio oftentimes will not supply enough current to power and turn on all of these devices. This is where adding a new circuit with a relay comes into play. I'm currently working on installing three amps, a DSP, and several other devices, and I built this amplifier rack, and I'm working on adding a relay, so I figured why not take you guys along for the ride and explain how to wire one of these. I'm Mark, welcome to Car Audio Fabrication. Here on this channel, we learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install your dream car audio system. So let's get started. So this is my amplifier rack that's going to be going into the vehicle. And if you guys missed the previous video, let me start out with just giving you a quick explanation of everything that's going on here. First of all, I of course have my amplifiers, one, two, three amps here. These are for the mids and highs. And then this is for the subwoofers. Over on this end, I have a DSP, which is a digital signal processor. This allows me to take the incoming audio signal from the head unit or the speaker level signal from a factory system. I can control that signal. I can do time alignment, equalization, change the crossovers. I can do all that tuning and then send the signal out to each of these amps. Over on this end, we have all my power distribution. I'll be able to use obviously fuses on the positive side, and then I'll just use these ground link terminals here on the ground side. So those connections aren't made yet, but that's what will connect up to the battery in the front of the vehicle and the ground of the vehicle. From there, each of these sets of wires is distributed to the three amplifiers. You can see positive ground, positive ground, they all run back here, positive ground, three connections. Now the other connection I have here made is to a separate fuse block, and this is for all the accessories in the vehicle, and this is where our relay comes into play. I love this fuse block for when we're doing a build that has a lot of different accessories like cooling fans, LED lights, turning on the amps. Let me explain why. So first of all, you can see by my two main connections here, I have a ground side with 12 different connections I can make, and then I have a positive constant side with six connections that I can make that are fused. Where things get more complex though, is I also have an additional side here that you know I could use as a 12 volt constant and just connect another wire. But in this case, I wanna use these six connections as a switched 12 volt lead. This will allow me to provide power to accessories that I only want to turn on when the vehicle audio system is on. So you can see I've already made some connections to each of these banks. I have a ground and a positive constant right here that's running over to the DSP. Now the DSP needs to know when to turn on. Obviously we don't want it on all the time. So that blue wire there is connected to the switched side of the fuse block. This DSP has a remote out, which is a cool feature because it allows the amplifiers to turn on a few seconds after the DSP turns on. And this helps with issues like turn on pop or other noise. Now, typically in a more simple car audio system on that remote in that I currently have that blue wire, we could just use the remote output lead from our radio, from our aftermarket radio to turn on the DSP. But here's the issue, that turn on lead only provides a small amount of current. It's not enough to power multiple fans, multiple LED light circuits, other things that we wanna to add to this build. So again, that's where the relay comes into play. So what kind of relay should you get and what features are you going to want to look for? Typically you're going to want either a single pull double throw or a single pull single throw type relay. So the acronyms for that are SPDT or SPST. For what we're doing here, a single pull, single throw relay just loses one of our connections here in the middle that a double throw would have. We don't need a double throw for this application, but if that's what you picked up and that's what you have to use, it doesn't hurt anything. You're just not going to use one of the terminals. Now, another feature to look out for here though, and these are what I like to keep on hand, are relays that have a fuse built into them. You always wanna make sure you protect the wiring so that if you were to draw too much current through this relay, it would obviously blow the fuse before anything more dangerous is going to happen. And if you didn't have a fuse block built into the relay, you could always do one of these inline style fuses, but obviously this makes things a little bit more clean having the fuse built in. Now, in my system design here, this 
fuse is going to be a little bit redundant because I'm going to connect the supply 12 volt constant to this here, which already is a fuse block. So I can have a fuse there. So it's redundant. It won't hurt anything having the two fuses, but if you were doing a system where you weren't adding a big fuse block like this, and you wanted to connect multiple things to the relay, what you could do is you could use the supply voltage from a distribution block, and then you're not having to wire in that inline fuse like we talked about. Another thing to keep an eye out for when you're picking a relay, we could use these crimp on style connections in order to connect each of our wires, but a lot of times they will come with this connector here. I like this, it's a little bit more of a rapid connection obviously, and it just makes troubleshooting and moving things around if need be a little bit more simple. Guys, I know this is a lot to take in, but I wanna make sure that I'm giving you guys the full story here, tons of info. The last thing we wanna keep an eye out for is whether or not the relay has a spike suppression diode built in. This is a diode and essentially it either blocks or allows current to flow in a circuit. The only real problem with a relay is on the coil side of the connections, so terminals 85 and 86. Everything works great when the circuit is energized, but it's when we de-energize the circuit that this coil inside the relay creates a large voltage spike caused by back EMF. This voltage spike is very quick, but it can easily reach 200 volts, which can damage our system components. So to solve this on relays that don't have a diode built in, we can simply add it on the coil connections. If we look closely at the diode, there's an anode side and a cathode side. The cathode side has that little line. We want to put the cathode side on the positive wire that we're going to be using for the coil. This way, when the coil is energized, there's no flow through the diode. But when our circuit turns off, disengaging the coil, that back EMF can now discharge through the diode. I have a relay on order that has a diode built in, which obviously makes the wiring a little bit cleaner. So I'm not gonna be showing the wiring of the diode in this video, but just for illustrative purposes, all you have to do is just make that connection across the coil. So now I wanna to explain to you guys how to make all the connections and wire our relay. But first, I do wanna take a quick second to thank our monthly channel sponsor, Crutchfield. When we're upgrading to an aftermarket head unit or new speakers or other gear in a vehicle, it can be a challenge to know exactly how to disassemble everything. On the Crutchfield website, we enter the year, make, and model of our vehicle, and we can see all of the research that they've done for a particular vehicle, and we can also see if they have this available right here. This is the Crutchfield Master Sheet. In this case, we're looking at the master sheet for the Ford F-150, which is what this build is for. And you can see that the guys over at Crutchfield have done a ton of research telling us all the different tools that we're going to need for each different task. This is the instructions for taking out the radio. They have instructions for removing the front A pillars and getting at the speakers. Instructions for removing the door panels and replacing those speakers, tons of different information in this master sheet. Better yet, with some purchases, Crutchfield will include access to the master sheet for you. I've used Crutchfield for many, many years, long before they were ever a sponsor of the channel. If you guys want to learn more and take advantage of a special offer for car audio fabrication fans, check out the link here on screen or down in the video description. Every relay is going to have a diagram like this on it, and this diagram explains exactly what the relay is doing. I rather explain this diagram to you guys so that in the future you can easily just look at the relay to make your connections and you don't necessarily need to memorize anything. It's easy to just understand this diagram. First off on the relay we can see a switch here at the top that is open and that's because in its normal state this switch is broken. It won't allow current to flow through. So we know that we want terminals 30 and 87 to be the connection that we're going to make from our constant source here on pin 30 and once that switch is closed 87 is going to be our positive turn on lead to all of our different devices. Now the other part of the diagram here this little square with the line through it that is a coil. In one of my older videos, I broke open a relay to show you guys what's actually going on inside. And what that is, is it's a small coil that when it has current running through it, it pulls that switch into the closed position. So on terminal 86, I want my turn on lead that comes from the radio with that low amount of current. And then that circuit needs to be able to complete. That way you can have the electrons flowing through so that you have current pulling that switch closed. So on terminal number 85, that's going to be our ground. How do you know which terminal is which? A lot of times on the back side of the relay, if you look closely, you can see that number next to each terminal. To make each of these connections, I'm using normal wiring procedures. You're gonna have cases where you may need to elongate some of the wiring, so you want to solder, and then of course use heat shrink to cover up the wiring. 
Depending on the connections you need to make, you may need to connect a ring terminal that crimps on. You may need to connect a spade terminal that crimps on. And of course, it's a good idea to heat shrink and cover those connections as well. So a brief overview of what we've done. The blue wire here, that connects to terminal number 87. That's going to be my turn on lead for all the different accessories. So that's why I've connected it to this main connection here on the fuse block, which is distributed to these six different points. Since the relay is rated at 30 amps max, I want to make sure that all of these fuses here never sum up to more than 30 amps. I don't intend to get anywhere close to that amount of current for this section here because I'm just doing LED lights and a couple of other things. So do keep in mind also that there's never an issue with using a smaller fuse size to be extra careful. In this case, I'm just using a 20 amp for the supply. So that's the other connection I've made here. That's that red wire, which is terminal number 30 on the relay. That is my constant 12 volt supply. The black wire here on the relay that is on terminal number 35 and that of course is my ground connection. And finally, the last connection that I can't make right now, this is going to be the white wire. This is terminal number 86. This is my trigger lead. This is going to connect to that remote output from the head unit. In fact, I might as well add one of these quick disconnects and crimp that on. So this way, this is ready to go. All I have to do is run that remote wire to this in the vehicle, once it's in the vehicle, and connect it. Along with knowing how to properly use a relay, there's other important aspects of car audio electrical. We need to know how to size our fuses, how to size all of our wiring. If you'd like to learn those things, I have other videos focused on the car electrical system here on the channel. Next time you're doing a car audio install, definitely check out show sponsor Crutchfield and see if they have a master sheet available for your vehicle. It definitely makes the process a lot more simple. Learn more about them and get a special offer for car audio fabrication fans at the link on screen. A special thanks to them along with Anthony Mike. Mike Ali, Jerry Marcos William, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. Big thanks to all those guys for making these videos possible. Thank you guys for tuning in and watching. As always, I'll see you guys in the next one.